Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, we are back with another guest. Man, we just hit 70 subscribers. By the time this is out, I think we'll have more, but um, 70 isn't a lot. It's, it's really nothing, to be honest. But um, from the milestone we got when we started off this three, four months ago to now, it's, it's really good. So, guys, uh, remember, all my social media is down below in the description. Please go follow me on Instagram and stuff like that and Twitter. Uh, to get all the updates, but I'm not here to say that now today. I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about Mike. What's up, Mike? What's up? Hey, how's it going? How's it going, man? So for the people that don't know you, Mike, please, is it Mike or Mikey? What would you like to be called? Mike. Mike, right. Lovely. Uh, right, Mike, um, for the people that don't know, please introduce yourself. So I'm Mike Moore. I'm a filmmaker, a videographer, photographer, and recently a musician. Oh, Jesus. A recently musician. Yeah, I only got started. I only started getting into it recently, like Jeez. the last few months. And what was that progress like? Because I I put out um I put out a, a rap video and I got a good mm. response on it. It was original, and then I made a for quarantine. I made a comedy song called uh, "In Quarantine" with Charlie Sheen, and that got a good response as well. It was fucking, right. it was deadly today. I made the sh- I made the song. I got the beat. I made that in a day. I made the music video in a day. It's just to challenge myself within 24 hours. And it, it was actually oh, all right. Like, you look back, you're like, that's not all right. It's not the best, but it's cool. But um, but like yourself, um, what was that process like when you were starting all that and wanted to get into music? Uh, it was it was a big jump. It was a lot to learn from the beginning. It was like everything was completely new to me because I had no training in music whatsoever. Mm. So I had to do everything myself. Um, I was originally making it with a friend, but then he uh, had a few problems and didn't want to mm-hmm. make it anymore. So I went from being a duo to restructuring the entire thing just around me. Yeah, and it was it that was like another jump as well because I wasn't expecting to have to go it solo, mm-hmm. but then I kind of just had to make the leap. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a big change, but uh, yeah, it's going well so far. Like it, it's it's so there's so much to learn. Like. Mm. And like, is it um, is it is it instruments you're playing now, or is it what what type of style? Because you did send me a it and watch it. Because I want to know, like, if I if I watch all this stuff, I'll know about you. This is this podcast is about me getting to know people, and it's right. like the same, the way these fans are watching now, the way these people are watching, I'm gonna get the exact same reaction. Do you know what I mean? We're gonna share the exact same reaction towards you. Mm-hmm. So, and um, what type of style of music do you do when and that you're into? Uh, it's mostly hip hop is what I listen to, and that's yeah. kind of what I'm making. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like it's kind of lo-fi it's kind of like um, it's kind of like Brockhampton kind of inspired because um, they're like a big influence on me mm. and it's kind of hard to describe lo-fi hip-hop I guess is what I'm doing yeah what do you think about um, the Irish hip-hop scene oh okay <laughs> yeah come on it's alright of... it's alright you can, you can talk about it it's grand go on I have a lot of opinions um, so I think there's a lot of great talented people involved, but there's also a lot of people who are not so talented yeah, and kind yeah. of just jump on mm. uh, trends and bandwagons and stuff. And there's kind of like a circle of people just giving each other like attention and clout yeah. and stuff, and they probably mm. don't really deserve it. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. I think the Irish hip hop scene, man, what they do, they have their own little cult, as I call it, and. Uh, mm. There, as you said, there is a few people. And um, there's a guy that lives across the road from my ma's house that he was at one stage. He was uh, the best in Ireland. Uh, he'd go around rapping and stuff and all. Um, Rap Tor, his name was. Right. Um, and he's really good. But um, I I seen that a lot of them are very very. Um, how can I put it? Like they they don't know anything else. What outside that outside that circle. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. Like when it goes to yeah, England, when they're going to the fucking the England side and America and stuff and all that, that, that branching out, but it's nothing like the English scene or nothing like the yeah. American scene. Do you get me? It's, it's like they're stuck and they can't fucking adapt and go mm-hmm. out. And I exactly. think I think they need to change the way um, they do their social media, the way they promote themselves and stuff, because... Mm. Even though they are getting a, a lot of exposure, they're not getting as much as the English scene would or the American mm. scene would. You get me? America, America's really known the most for all that kind of stuff. Do you get me? Um, yeah. But um, for the likes of yourself, you did send me um, a song, and that was your song, was it? 
That was it your was, yeah. it was your song. Now I will listen after this because I want to get to know you. So I will listen after this and I'll say to you, I'll say, man, I fucking listen to it. Um but for the likes of that, I did want to get into the likes. You said you're you're into making films as well, and that's something that we mm. share an interest in, is that uh, like so and um, when did you start getting interest? What age did you start getting interested in films and wanted to make films? Uh, well I've always been interested in films, like more mm. than the average person. And I was in T Y and we did a filmmaking workshop. And at that point, I was kind of putting it off, like kind of pushing it away from the back of my mind, thinking, oh, this isn't like something you can do for a career. Yeah. Um, but then when we did the filmmaking workshop, I, I was like, I kind of just realized that that's what I wanted to do. And I just had to go for it. And hmm. um, so that's where my kind of like interest officially started, I guess. Um, and then I went to college twice, two different film schools, and dropped out of both of them. Yeah, I dropped out. And then I too. got, huh? I dropped out my one as well. Too nervous on oh, really? exams. Yeah. Oh, where'd you go? Uh, Body Farm College. Yeah, I went there though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, yeah. It was good, but I just got the, too nervous. Did you do the film course or the cinema? Yeah, uh, I don't film and television. Uh, oh film, yeah, and stuff like that as well. But uh, I, I want to go back and do it. But come here. Can just you learn as you go on and the more exactly. you get Jamie you know I mean? like I think it, I think the best way to learn is by going out with a camera doing yourself and when you meet all these different people and doing these different projects that you will get knowledge from these people and their experience and then you they'll show you things or they'll give you tips and the best mm. way to learn is literally by yourself I didn't know I didn't have a clue how to write a script my friend showed me a few times when we were like picking was this 2012 or something it was and yeah. from then on I just like now I could write a fucking full feature. Do you get me? I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I like that. Like the likes of that. But for the likes of yourself, who inspired you to um want to get in film? What was that film that you were looked at and you went, Jesus Christ, man, this is something I want to do? Um, I don't think there was any like one film. I think I just loved film so much and I was constantly watching them like in my free time when I was in school and everything. And mm. I uh I knew loads of uh filmmaker friends and all that and that's kinda like we have like we built kind of like a small community of me and my friends of like collaborators and filmmakers and I just kind of grew up with them yeah. in my late teens and we just like pushed each other through it and that, yeah, that's how it came about. It's it's good the way you, you can have a group around you, isn't it? That are same and inspired by the same things as yourself. Mm. Uh, when you were, when you were a kid, did you have people like that around you that were wanted to make films as well, or is it just when you were in your uh, your the the adult stage? Uh, when I was a kid, I wasn't really into it. Like I was always into creative stuff um, as a kid, but my interests have changed. Uh, I only really got into it like when I was 16 when I did that TY thing. And then after that, I went to the National Young uh, Film School or whatever. Mm. The, yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but the mm. uh, Young Irish Filmmakers Summer Camp. Uh, National Youth Film School is what it's called. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that, but you basically, it's basically like a summer camp for like people in their teens to um, get in groups and make films. Yeah, that's and a good idea. Just, yeah, you stay there in Kilkenny in um, in a school over the summer when it's closed. And mm. uh, it's basically really good for your like portfolio getting into colleges and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, 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 think, um, I think it is uh, good um, that you were involved and stuff like that uh, when you were younger. Because I said in previous podcasts, there was no one around. Uh, when I wanted to make films, like, my mates weren't interested. They'd rather sit in the wall and scratch the hole and play football, yeah. you know, and play kick the can or whatever, uh, than do that. So I'd always I'd always be writing stories when I was younger or I'd always be filming me mates and trying to do vlogs and, you know I mean, try to make little short films and so on. And then my friends would be like, put that camera down, will you? And I'm like, listen, boys, I need to do this. And they, they wouldn't care after a while. Just let me do what I want to do. It was the weirdo with the camera in the corner. Um, yeah, but, um <laughs> But like yourself, um, what short films? Have you made any short films? And what was... Could you tell us some? Uh, well, I've only directed, like, one short, but I, mm. I'm i usually, like, the cinematographer of my friends' films mm. and uh, any, like, short films that people have, like, hired me on. Yeah. And um, so, like, I started off making the short film called Shell by uh, Katie McKenna, and I was the DP on that. And, like, it went to a few festivals, and it went to... It played in the Lighthouse Cinema for like um, a competition and stuff like that. Yeah. And from then on, I just kept on making a few more. Like whenever my friends needed a DP, I was there to do it. Like, yeah, that's, that's um, good, man. That's good. Yeah. And is it is this something that you're gonna go right? This is something that. This is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. 
Is this something that um, you've, you've made a yoke or is this just for the time being? Because it is hard knowing that, right, I can't get paid weekly. This isn't a week. I'm going to ask you this question as well because I asked every filmmaker, every actor, so like that as well. Um, but this isn't like, this isn't something that you can just hop into straight away because the amount of people that want to do this is that you can't go in and like, like a retail job where you go in nine to five, Monday to Friday and you, mm. you work and you get paid hourly. This is, you have to go out yourself and you have to find these gigs yourself. And then mm. most of them, people don't have money to do it. So you're just doing it exactly. like you put on your portfolio. And I know that could be uh, stressful and frustrating, but for the likes of yourself, um, what I was going to ask is, is that, um, what, how can I put this? What, um, what is your opinion on, on that, on the likes of doing all these free gigs and um, working towards something? What, what is your opinion on that again? working on free gigs? Obviously, everybody wants to work on, wants to work and get paid for it, but do you mind um, doing free gigs? Um, well, I did a lot of free gigs when I was starting out before I built up like a decent showreel and portfolio. So I, unless it's for like a really good friend or something, I kind of, mm. I kind of feel like I'm past that point. Yeah. Um, which means like you will end up getting like less work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I definitely recommend like you have to do it from the start, you know? Mm. Um, but past a certain point, I think you have to have a bit more kind of like, uh, respect for yourself and your work and just say no it's about time i start earning yeah. some money from this as well yeah because you yeah. invest a lot in with your time and your equipment like, the and, and your travel as well man if you have to pay yeah. for travel jimmy a lot of people yeah. say no man i don't have enough for travel that was me when when i was making the fucking me films uh the best thing i could do was is that we had a car and we could probably collect people and that was it i couldn't pay mm -hmm. them i couldn't do nothing i got them when we finished the film we had a premiere and I got them loads of, we got loads of food and we were able to pay them through food and stuff and all. Did you get me in the likes of that? But uh, that was the only thing I could do. And uh, I know that for the likes of people like yourself that are going out as a way to help other people and give them the experience and the knowledge that you have um, is that it, it can be frustrating sometimes because you're mm. probably there wondering, oh, when the fuck am I going to get paid for this? When am I going to start? When is money going to roll in and pull in? But I think, I think you're right um, when you said that I'm I I'm I'm not gonna do free gigs anymore. That I like that you have the knowledge now and you have the expertise and you know what you're doing. Do you know what I mean you could probably just go with a camera? They can give you your shot list or so, or, and you can just go. Right, I know what I'm doing. Let me leave leave me alone to it. I'll do it myself. And you yeah. have that experience. So uh, fair play to you, man, for um, saying no to them free gigs because. Um, a lot mm. of people don't. A lot of people just want to go. Oh, maybe they'll pay me next time if if they like my cinematography, you know. And you're just yeah. like, yeah, just fucking. I don't. I. You never know. So fair play to you, man, for sticking out your fucking foot and you're saying fuck this. You want me? You want me expertise? You're gonna fucking pay me for it. Um, yeah. but but the likes of that. Um, for when you said you were directing a film, what was that like directing? Uh, well, it wasn't. Like I was, the, I was the director. Like it was my film, but I didn't mm. actually have to really do any directing because it was like a found footage film mm. I made during quarantine. And mm. um, is basically I just took like a load of old like uh, phone footage that I had uh, like on my phone and on my friends, and then on like strangers online, mm. and put it all together as kind of like a before and after oh. uh, COVID nineteen. Yeah. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, please do. And uh, the then it basically just jumps to like what life was like after quarantine yeah. and it's just like empty streets and stuff like that. And um, yeah. So that, that, that was my, like the film that was just like to my name, but I didn't actually have to do any like directing. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think, I think every filmmaker, man, anyone that wants to be a filmmaker and so they are making a corn. I wrote a fucking script of do a quarantine film, but I need, I need about two more people, uh, like like an actor, me, myself, and then mm. someone else. I can do the fucking, I can do the bloody camera myself. And uh, yeah. all I need is just, I, I have a tripod. That's the only shots I need for it and so. But um, yeah, yeah it's, I think every filmmaker, every like person that wants to be a filmmaker has wrote a script for this. The amount, yeah. I, I'm telling you now, and then Hollywood and stuff like that, when this is all over, they're going to jump on it. They're going to get the best actors. They're going to get this, like, and... If, if there was a quarantine film, actually, this is the first time I actually have to ask this question. So, right, I'm going to ask this question more to other people, but this is the first one for you, right? 
if right. there was a quarantine film, right? Who would you who would you get to play in it? Who would you get to star in a quarantine film? Knowing about this, oh. this, so you have a man, you have a woman, and you probably have a boy and a girl, little boy and a girl. So who would you pick? What actors would you pick if that was your dream role? Like if you were a director and you were, that's a good fucking question, actually. So who, mm. who, who, who would you pick? Because I know it's probably off the spot going, shit, there's so many that I'd probably pick. And so, but I'll, go on, take your time there. Let us know. Right. So he's, he's not necessarily my favorite actor or anything, but I just feel that he'd be right for the role of the uh, Tom Hanks. He just has that kind of survival kind of vibe yeah, around yeah, him. Yeah. And he's gone through it as well. He's gone through it. So he'd probably be oh, the Oh, yeah, best. exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, I forgot yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. Who would be the guy? Um, for the leading actress, I don't know. I kind of feel like Sally Field because Sally it's Field, because like, she's on this roughly the same age with Tom Hanks, and I imagine they'd be husband and wife or something. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. She's really good as well. So, what about and, uh, what about the what about the kids? Man, I don't know any kid actors. No, no, none at all. Like even from the eighties or anything. Like if if you could go back and oh fuck, I mean like. Um, Like, all I, I can think about is the kids from Stranger Things. Grab to them two over. Oh, like, yeah, sure. The Throw them in there. They're popular. Yeah. Fuck it. They can just get in there because we don't know anybody else to hire. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, if it looks at that, yeah. That's, no, that's a good pick. That's actually good. I'm going to write that down, actually, and I'm going to fucking ask more people that now. So that'll be the first time I ask that question because um, mm. I think it's a good subject during this time. And I, I want to ask you as well, um, when you make uh, your music, or you make, um, or you direct your, your short film and you, you brought it out. And so when you were getting feedback and so, um, what are you like when it comes to compliments? Did, can you take compliments? Or are you more like, oh, fucking no, leave me alone. Just, yeah. right, what, what, what are you like? Do you like getting compliments? I know everybody likes getting compliments, mm. but we just try not to show it because it pushes us to do more. But yeah. when someone says it to you face to face or something like that, you know, um, if I was on here right now and I start fucking bouncing out with compliments, would you be like, oh, stop, stop, stop? Or would you be like, yep, yeah, no, no bother, no bother. What type of person are you when it comes to compliments? Uh, I'd be in between. I'd kind of be like, cool, thanks. Yeah. And yeah. I just like, yeah. wouldn't really know how to react to it, yeah. you know? And you, I'll accept it, but... Yeah, and it, it's, it's weird because the likes of yourself, I'd be the same that if someone was giving you a compliment, it, it looks like to that person that, you don't really give a shite. You're just like, oh yeah, <laughs> thanks. But really, I like, oh my fucking god, that's deadly. Nice one, thanks very much. But yeah, you just yeah. don't know how to fucking. You don't know how to receive that. Do you get me? Um, yeah. for the likes of that. Um, but is there anything you're actually working on now? Now at the moment, um, that after this you can get out and get a big film crew together and stuff and all. Is there any scripts you're writing or so? Uh, I haven't written a script in years. Yeah. Um, but I I've already signed up to like do a few things like. My friend um, Dana Lee, she's a filmmaker in Dublin. She's uh, we were we were actually in the middle of uh, pre-production on her next short film, and then the whole quarantine thing kicked off. So now we don't uh, we don't really have a plan for it anymore. But uh, yeah. we'll see how things go. I'd say in a few months we might be able to get it going. Yeah, man. Um, I was gonna ask you about this and the whole thing because it is a subject to bring up with each guest. Because what are you like? How are you feeling during all this? What's your kind of um what's your thoughts about this and so um like i'm doing okay i have my good days and my bad days like anybody mm. else you know um i don't know i think there's gonna be i just have a feeling there's gonna be some major changes to how we live um mm. for a few years maybe mm. after this like after things are reopened i don't think things will just immediately go back to the way they were no i, I, I think it's also it. highlighted a lot of um stupid things that we do that we don't need to do yeah, in our regular yeah. lives you know yeah i I, like, I miss man just going to bloody starbucks and sitting there with a hot chocolate and just sitting there like i, I miss it somewhere it's something so simple that you took for granted but go on sorry, yeah. continue sorry 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 sorry. i was actually just about to mention starbucks uh, <laughs> in the complete opposite way i was just gonna say like <laughs> you really need to go to starbucks <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. you kind of re- well it's different for different people i suppose yeah 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 Come here, man. If you feel a certain way, I'm not going to get offended by it. That's your opinion. Say what you want to say. I'm not going to get offended. If you're going to say, listen, that's fucking stupid. You think you're fucking Starbucks. That's the only... You say what you want, man. Do you get me? I'm not going to get offended by it. So uh, even if I fucking like... Yeah, yeah. like because everybody has their own opinions, you know what I mean? Their own 
bloody they can say what they want. It's the other players, and if they react a certain way or they get offended by it, that's their like that's their fault. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. It's your own opinion, so you shouldn't take it. So, but no, I I, I agree that the likes of what you're saying with the Starbucks and so on is that come here, there's bigger problems than that. But I don't know, just for myself, it's just small things that I miss. Like, I, I would go to the cinema every single Monday, every night. And if I wouldn't go with, um, if I wouldn't go with someone, I'd go on my own. Don't give a shit. I'd sit there yeah. with a sambo and a fucking drink and a bar. And I'd sit there and watch films. I, I enjoy it. And I miss it so yeah. much uh, for the likes of that. But what's, what's one of the things that you miss doing since all this happened? Oh, I'm the same way. I miss the cinema as well. I yeah. used to be going <laughs> as much as I could. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I really miss going. Like, mm. the last thing I saw was The Invisible Man, and that, that was fucking ages ago. Like, what was that like? Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's yeah. a decent enough horror thriller. Yeah. Mm. I, I, my, mine was the, uh, the, um, I think it was called The Gentleman. Uh, that oh yeah, out. was that any good? Oh, that's fucking great. I was, was like, it? Jesus Christ, yeah, I was like, that's good. I like the story. I love the story. The way the story is, and um, the right. actors were pretty good in it as well. But um, I, I, uh, what's his name? Something Grant, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, yeah. He see him. I was like, I don't fucking like him, man. But after this, I'm like, Jesus Christ, he's fucking, he's good. Like I, I, I right. liked him in that. Like it was really, really good. But yeah, if you if you have something to watch, man, if you need something to watch, I I suggest the uh, the gentleman. Um, yeah, I can try. That guy Richie movie, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's good though. He's the guy that made Snatch as well. Mm. Yeah, he. I haven't actually seen that. I'm pretty sure oh, I have it on my God. shelf here somewhere. Yeah, I have it, but uh, oh, I, I think haven't you should it. just grab it and fucking watch it, man. Because it's really? such, it's so like that type of style of film and so like because my the likes of that where the, the stories are and the voiceovers and then um the Tarantino films and all that. I know they're different, but. Them two type of styles, I love them styles. I, I mm. love, it's all about the story and it's the characters and bonding with the characters. That's what I love about Tarantino and then the gruesomeness and the fucking voiceovers and the, the way the characters are. And so I, I fucking love it. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, for the likes of that, man, um, for the likes of that, what would you, what would you be, what would you be doing now um, if quarantine wasn't happening now? Was there projects that were coming up that you're probably involved in? Uh, well, like I was saying there, um, I had that one film already lined up that we would have definitely shot by now. Probably mm. might have even been finished, like yeah. um, editing by now, mm. uh, if the uh, virus didn't happen. Um, I didn't. I, I can't even remember. Oh, I had a music video I was supposed to direct, mm. um, that that got like pushed po- or postponed, oh, like shit. pushed back. I don't know when that's gonna happen. Um, I don't know. Like I just came off working on a. On um, my first season on TV show, so I was gonna look for like an, another like it's a, obviously because it's seasonal. And mm. um, I just came back in February, like I was like, I think I moved back the last day of February, so I got back like two or three weeks before this whole thing kicked off. So imagine we're stuck over Huh? Were you? Where, where were you? What country were you? Oh, over? sorry, it was in Galway. God, um, I'm there going, there you go. Imagine got stuck over there. No, you'd be yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. yeah, like uh, I just got back in the nick of time basically before I would have been stuck there and I would have had to pay rent somewhere that I couldn't yeah. afford anymore. Jesus yeah, Jesus. would have been nuts. Um, but I was initially, to answer your question, I was initially going to be actually just looking for a regular job for the six months. Yeah. Um, but then this whole thing happened, so I want to. I want to ask you, right? And as I said earlier, um, I ask these questions to these type of people. These nine to five jobs and staying there like eight hours a day, is that something that you can do? Like, because for me or any other bloody actor that I've asked, they find it difficult to keep a job because it's not what they're interested in. And it's the same as me. I'll go in a job and I'll do a job, but mm. I will not go. I will not be like everybody else. You will see that I have no interest and I'm only there for the money and that's it. Um, mm. I have no passion for the job itself. But when it comes to something like this, you will see me fucking working hard and I'll do everything I believe you can. It's just a different work method yeah. that I have. So for the likes of yourself, what is that like? What is it, is it, is it, do you not mind working a nine to five job Monday to Friday or even on weekends? What, what's it like? Like on the show or a regular no, job? No, on, on like retail or regular job. Like oh, the, right. Yeah, me, so it's uh, a regular job. I haven't, five. I haven't actually worked like too many like actual like yeah. jobs because I was just out of college before I got 
the TV job. Mm. And by out of college, I mean I dropped out. Yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, I wouldn't be mad about it. Like I mm. couldn't pretend to give a shit. To be honest. Yeah. I yeah. Like, I think I think you're right. I think all of us, our type of people are creative people that mm. we don't suit a nine to five day job. And I know yeah. some people are going to look at this and go, you lazy bastards. But no, listen, listen to me. If you're watching, we can't, we can't process it when we're walking around and we're literally just fucking all we're thinking about is, Oh, I could be doing this. I could be doing that. Like you, you have all these little ideas in your head that you could be doing that. You could be at home now working on. And so, and yet again, no, it doesn't pay the bills, but I, I, I get money. I get money. I have my own little place and, to get me in it, I have enough to pay rent, I have enough for food, and I have enough for my dogs, and that's all I need because mm. what I'm working on that will probably, if you put it in the film festivals and so, like, you could you could get somewhere where I, I made yeah. a short film called The Interview that got a bit noticed. Um, I made a film called The Lotto Ticket, and I said to me and my friends, we started up this uh production called The Dream Factory Productions, and we started up and I wrote a film called The Lotto Ticket, and I go to the lads, I guarantee you from that, more people are gonna want to work with us. So we released that. Uh, I was put it in the film festivals and then I said, fuck it, lads, just release it. And uh, we released it. And then I was supposed to do a film. We were supposed to have auditions on the 11th of April. Um, and I held auditions. Uh, we were going to do that in the Clayton Hotel. And about 60 people, 55, 60 people sat mesh to me saying, can we audition for this? We've seen the lotto ticket. And I looked at everybody. I was like, what did I fucking tell you? You have to have fucking faith. You have to believe in yourselves and you work hard. You're gonna, people are going to see how good we are. And from the Hitman, trust me, I fucking wish we were filming the Hitman because we were going down to Wicklow. We were going to everywhere. And it was like a comedy kind of inspiration yeah. from Pulp Fiction, the two Hitmen and kind of that kind of style. And so, yeah. um, but I said it to the lads, have faith in yourself and people will fucking start seeing it. You, you, Cause if I went into a retail job that I wouldn't put the effort in to get me, I'd just go in and go, Oh, all right, what's up and all and stuff like that as well. I'd, I'd have great chats with you in conversations, but if you see me on a fucking film set or a movie set, I'm fucking, it's me. I fucking sprung mm. to life to get me. It's like, totally different person. Um, yeah. But is that the likes for you as well? That if it was in a, like a retail job towards on a set, you'd be a different type of person, same tip and mood set and so. Yeah. Like I can't, like I haven't actually worked like a proper mm. like nine to five besides this, but I just know that. Yeah. Like yeah. be a totally different person. Yeah. Cause uh, the, the fucking, the fun and the banter on a film set is like unmatched. Like it's mm. great crack. Yeah. Yeah. I think and, it's yeah yeah yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go on, sorry. I keep on. No, no, no. <laughs> you just can't. Uh, you just can't compete with that, really. And then when you, when you when you're kind of in your zone, and then you compare that to like working in a shop or something, it's just dead. Yeah, so there's no enjoyment in that. Like, yeah, it's it's fucking soul sucking, isn't it? And it's yeah. mad the way as a society that that's what we have to accept. That's what yeah. we have to do. And I'm like, and I'm. I'd be like, you'd be the exact same as well, Mike, that you're the type of person that would go, fuck yes, this is not what I want to do. There's people that will literally wake up nine to five every day, Monday to Friday, and then the boss will come in and he say, here, sorry, the fucking Elijah's out, she broke her leg, do you want to come in and do Saturday and Sunday? And you're like, no, I don't even like Elijah, she's a bitch, so I'm not mm-hmm. going to cover for her. And then you're literally, <laughs> just, and they're literally like, oh, well, we need someone. It's like, well, get someone else, I'm not there. I don't, I don't care about the job. They know you don't care, but when it comes to films and all, you're running around, you're doing everything. And I think that, but like to me and yourself is that, um, we just don't, it's, it's not in our fucking nature, man. It's not in our brain. It doesn't fucking, it just doesn't work. We have the creativity side of it and that's what we enjoy doing. Um, mm. and I'm, I'm never going to regret that. Um, I, no. I, I love doing podcasts because it gets to meet people like yourself, creative people that want to do something and are just not sitting around fucking, waiting for fucking shit to happen you're, you're doing something yeah. you made a fucking your own little short films get me you got all these clips you put in effort you've done everything like that and uh you're making music now as well so that's fucking mm. that's brilliant man so if you if you do if you are sitting there because i know quarantine you same as myself i'm sitting here some days going what the fuck am i doing with myself but yeah you have to remember that you're fucking walking towards something you're pushing towards something so um yeah. fair fucking play to you man fair fair fucks to you that you're, you're sticking out and you're doing it. And Cheers. these are compliments. And I said, I'm going to give fucking compliments. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, nice, man. Thanks. Yeah, nice and nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, because you need, you need to hear that shit. You need mm. to hear that shit. Even if you don't want it and it makes you feel uncomfortable, you need to hear it. Because yeah. if you're putting all this work in and a thank you is fucking, 
it's it'll go a long way, man. Do you know what I mean? It's a, a thanks for, even after putting all this effort and so. And thanks very much as well, man, for uh, messaging me as well and coming on and wanting no to come problem. on the show because. I'm fucking no one, man. Do you get me? I'm just trying to get people on to talk about the same yeah. things that I'm interested in. And uh, you, you went out of your way to say, here, come in. I'll fucking, do you want, can I be on? And I'm like, I love, I love podcasts. Yeah. It's fucking, it's, it's good, man. So uh, I do want to thank you for coming on. And uh, do you know what I mean? Thanks for having me. Like that. No, but man, I'm going to get into the last segment now, right? And this is, um, this is completely different. It doesn't matter if someone's a scientist. I, I asked him this question. So guys, you know what it is, boy, now. It's, Ghost stories. Oh, scary. Right, Mike. So I have two questions for you, right? It's okay right. now, right? So one, do you believe in an afterlife reincarnation and stuff like that as well? And two, do you have a story you can tell us, like a freaky story, like a ghost story or anything? I know anybody that probably told you one. Yeah, I have a few creepy stories. Oh, fuck, um, here we go. That's what, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I want to hear. Go on. All right. So uh, first one. I was in a hotel in Kilkenny once and then um, I was having tea and then the teapot just started rotating on the spot by itself. What the fuck? And then I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then it stopped. And then I was checking the table to make sure that it wasn't wobbly or anything yeah. or it could be spinning or whatever. And then it was completely steady and it wasn't like on a slope or whatever. So then I asked my dad, I was like, do you see that? And he said, no. And then it started doing it again. And then the second time he caught it, he was like, yeah, okay, that's a bit weird. And uh, yeah, that was fucking weird. Um, I have another story that just is, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Right, go on, tell me. I fucking love hearing this. Go on. Yeah, same. So I was in, I was in, uh, I was in Galway. I was in Salt Hill. And I was with my dad. And we were driving down um, around the corner from the promenade. We saw this guy as we were driving down who, who like, he stood out because he was, like, in a massive cast and crutches, and he was just, like, standing by the bus stop, and we noticed him while we were in traffic. Mm -hmm. And then we were, we kept driving down, and then we see the exact same guy what the fuck? coming the other way towards us. And it's like, we just drove past him. How is he there coming back the other way? What the fuck? It was really That's fucking weird. Shit. It was really shit. weird. Yeah. Do you, do you believe in aliens and do you believe all that? Do you think, I know this is another fucking question I haven't asked people I'm going to ask now as well. You're mm -hmm. fucking making me ask all these questions now. Listen, um, do you believe that we're not alone? Do you believe that there's other fucking species out there in the universe? Yeah, I think, I think there is, yeah. You're smart I had a, You're a smart I had man. a weird experience as well. Like I was, fucking you know, hell, Valley. he's followed him. Go on. You know Liffey Valley? I do. I only, I'm only about 10 minutes, 15 minutes away. All oh, right, great. Yeah. So I was coming out of the cinema uh, late at night a few years ago mm -hmm. with my brother and my aunt. And uh, we, we looked up above us in the sky and there was like these like six or seven like orbs, like white kind of like flashing light orbs. Um, I have a really shitty photo I can send you later. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like we're just looking up at them. We're like, what the fuck is that? Mm. And then uh, a few minutes later, they all kind of just disappeared. Like, it was fuck. really, really weird. Like. What the fuck? My, my, my dad and his friend, they were walking through the park. This was fucking years ago. He was telling me they were walking through uh, the park where, where Libby Valley is and then you, where mm. Greenfort is and stuff like that as well. Uh, do you know Greenfort and Shankcastle? Do you, do you hear them? They're right. Uh, do you know the houses? Really. Do you know when you're walking out of Libby Valley and there's houses where the bus stop is and then there's houses oh, there? Oh, yeah, but yeah. It's that park there. It's that area, right? Um, yeah. And um, he was walking back with a friend of his one night and they looked up at the fucking sky where you would be fucking looking up. And he said they saw this little thing fucking hovering, not, not little, but it was miles up, but it was fucking, it was, it was big and small, whatever. But um, it started, he said he looked up, right? And I was asking him, I'm going, were you fucking on something or something? Did you take something? He's like, no, 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 listen, 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 this is what happened. So he goes, he, he remember the two of them looking up and the two of them saw at the same time, it went, oh, and then shit. it just went, and it just fucking disappeared and the two of them just literally looked at each other and literally went like this did you see that did you fucking see that and it was like yeah i seen that it was like what was that and he he still believes to this day that he's like he saw it and it's it's mad and shit but yeah. I, I love asking people these questions because it's so fascinating to me especially for our likes of our mind and our imagination that we love mm. fucking 
we love this type of stuff do you get me this is what we fucking love listening to and so and that's what i do i always ask people as i said even if they're scientists and they don't believe i want to hear their reasons and i want to know why because i fucking believe that um this I, it's just me this can't be it this fucking can't be it the way everything is mm. everything's so perfect and everything's lining up and everybody's like well it's not that perfect like you can die from so many things but yeah think about the universe and how they fucking line up and, and then scientists mm. will be like well that's science and it's atoms and I'm like yeah that could be true as well but what the fuck is all this and I don't know I just find it real fascinating man I really do um, yeah, same. but um, yeah I just want to say man thanks very much for coming on and being a part of the podcast uh because i'm looking for a lot of fucking guests and greg um sent me loads of people loads of people and i was there trying to fucking message yeah. back and send voice messages and to other people and i was like what what a load of my friends coming on in the next week or two i think thank god thank god <laughs> man I, i'm booked up till the 9th of june i'll do the monday to friday i don't do saturday and sundays because of my day off but i need mm. something to do this yeah. all start jimmy i need something to do because if i don't i'll go mad the yeah, way but, I am and the way I need to think. If I sit there, man, I need to get up and do something. So I can't. But hmm. um, yeah, man, is there anything that you want me to put down in the description below that people right now could go out and watch? Uh, hmm. Maybe your song. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. song. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe sure. Shell. Can... Maybe Shell as well. That your friend. Yeah, that's quite. That's quite old. Maybe more recent one. I I did a more recent one called mm. "The Troubles." That was the pretty Troubles. good. Or. For his eyes only, but hmm. you'll have Tom on. He'll be talking about that. He directed it. Lovely. Well, I, yeah. well I'll ask Tom about that then as well. And I'll say, yeah. do you know Mike then? Of course I know Mike. And I'll be like, come here and I'll tell you something. He believes in <laughs> aliens. He's telling me stories. Um, but yeah, man, thanks very much again for coming on, being a guest. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you're all right during this time and so. And that, do you know what I mean? The likes of that. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of the All Right Podcast. And remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an all right podcast. Thanks for watching. Um, peace.